So our, our parable by choice uh, this morning is the uh, little parable in Matthew 13 called uh, the pearl of great price or the pearl of great value. And thinking about that, uh, uh, that image, I, I did a little bit of research this morning and, and found uh, a little bit about pearls. Uh, I found that the, the giant clam, one of the, the biggest uh, uh, producers, I guess you might say, of, of pearls, they're mostly found in the warm waters of the South Pacific, uh, also uh, some in the Indian Ocean. Uh, those are some, they're the largest of the mollusk family. Uh, the, the giant clam only gets one chance to find its home. It only gets one chance to, to find its home and be completely content and satisfied with the, with the place it's going to live for the rest of its life. Uh, once it fastens itself to one of the reefs uh, in, the, in the ocean, uh, it is attached to that reef for the rest of his life. And by doing so, it has been known that some of these giant clams, they can, they can grow up to four feet long and weigh as much as 500 pounds. So about 12 years ago, as I, I was thumbing through some stories, uh, I found a, a story about a, a Filipino fisherman. Uh, he and his uh, father and sons were out fishing off the, the coast of uh, the Philippines around a little island, the Palawan Island, uh, and uh, a, a storm arose. And so uh, in order to survive that storm, well, he uh, threw the anchor, and uh, after the storm had passed, uh, they pulled in that anchor, and, and, uh, but it was, it was hard to pull in. And what had happened, it had attached to one of these giant clams. And when they got the clam on the boat, well, they, they opened it up, and there was this, this big uh, polished rock within there. It was 2.2 uh, it was feet long and a foot wide. Uh, and uh, 75 pounds, but it was shiny and it was pretty. And so the guy, he took it home and he put it under his bed. And for the next 10 years, uh, every time he would go out on the open seas, he would go rub that shiny, uh, that shiny rock for good luck. Now, two years ago, uh, his house burned. And that shiny rock was one of the things that he grabbed before he left. And since he didn't have a home anymore, he took it to his aunt's house, and she happened to be uh, a part of the local government as the tourism uh, official. And she saw it, and, and the first time she had ever seen it, and uh, she thought she'd do a little bit of research on it. And uh, come to find out, it was a pearl. It was the largest pearl that had ever been found in the world, and it was worth $130 million. Now that, my friends, is a pearl of great price. Uh, but Jesus has his own version of a pearl of great price, and it's just a, a little story uh, from uh, Matthew 13. If you'll turn with me there, uh, we're going to look at verse 45 and 46 uh, just briefly this morning because I know you can smell the food, and I know that your stomach is, is probably growling like mine. And, uh, but we need to look at this for a moment. Uh, the, the version that Jesus will tell us this morning uh, has a value that far exceeds anything that the world has to offer. Uh, and, and more importantly, it's a, it's a value that we can enjoy now uh, and experience forevermore. So listen to these words from Matthew in uh, Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search for fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, this parable is actually one of five in Matthew 13. Uh, Jesus spends this whole uh, chapter here uh, trying to... Uh, uh, explain about the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but what exactly does Jesus mean by the kingdom of heaven? Well, it, it, if, if you think about it, the kingdom of heaven is, is the, the kingdom with which God dwells. It's God's kingdom. It's, it's where God rules. It's where God resides. Uh, that realm is, is now amongst, amongst us. Uh, and <laughs> that didn't come out very good, but anyway, uh, <laughs> and not yet. And so, so God's realm is, is, is everywhere uh, for us. Uh, it's, it's in heaven where we will spend eternity. 
uh, but it's also right now in the hearts and minds of the people who have surrendered their will over to God uh, and, and are living out God's will for their lives. It's, in, in either case, it is the ultimate state or realm of, of being. Now, if you were a hog, you would say that you were in hog heaven, right? That's where we get that term. If you're in hog heaven, that means you're, you're perfectly content in the mud hole, uh, slop, eating the slop that has been prepared for you. You don't want anything. You've got it all. You're taken care of and you're just as happy as a hog. Uh, you're in hog heaven in that pig waller. That's, that's where that, you're totally satisfied. That's where that term comes from. Uh, it means that you're, you're, you're in your perfect surroundings, completely content and satisfied uh, with your situation. Think of the Garden of Eden for a moment. Uh, if, you, if you remember that story, uh, Adam and Eve, they were, in, they were in hog heaven. They were in their perfect place. They were in uh, the kingdom of heaven in that place. They, they wanted for nothing. They were totally taken care of. Uh, everything was perfect in their lives. Uh, they were totally consumed by God uh, in their heart, mind, body, and soul until sin uh, entered the picture and they chose self instead of God. But Jesus says that we can have that back. That's this whole chapter 13, Jesus is saying we can have that back right here, right now. All we have to do is turn our will over to God's will and let God be the ruler of our lives instead of uh, our self-centered lives. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And that's what the merchant is doing in our story here. The, the merchant already had many pearls, but he wasn't satisfied. He wanted more pearls. You know, and we could, and we could think, you know, what are our pearls? We could start naming our pearls. What are our pearls? What, what is it that consumes us? Uh, is it God or is it uh, uh, money or houses or, or stuff? You know, stuff, we, we have stuff upon stuff upon stuff. So much that we have to rent storage buildings to store it all in. Uh, but, you know, those aren't bad in themselves. It's when, it's, it's when it takes our priority away from God. So, so if we have a boat, if we, if we go to the boat, or if we go to the lake every weekend and we don't ever worship God, well, you, it's pulling, that boat is pulling us away uh, from desiring God and what God has in store for us. And so, uh, Matthew 19, verses 16 through 21, teaches us about a young man. They called him uh, the rich young ruler in Luke's gospel. You know the story. Uh, Matthew just said that he was a young rich man. And uh, he went to Jesus wanting to know how he could inherit uh, eternal life or how he could inherit the kingdom of heaven. And uh, Jesus said, well, all you have to do is go sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you'll have treasures in heaven. Uh, but he didn't want to do that because he had many possessions. And he went away grieving, uh, the story says. His possessions ruled his life. And in that story, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person uh, to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because just as in Jesus' day, money seems to rule our world. It, it, it seems to take priority over everything. It does strange things to some people and cause him, causes them to do strange things. So if you say, well, you know, that probably doesn't apply to me because I don't have any money, and I don't have any things. Well, you've missed the point. Our pearls can be anything. Anything that comes between us and our desire uh, for our relationship with God. Anything that, that takes priority in our life, that keeps us uh, uh, from the kingdom of heaven. It could be bad habits, it could be uh, addictions, it could be uh, relationships that aren't healthy, uh, physically or spiritually. It could be uh, uh, not doing anything at all, uh, like the, the, the man in one of Jer uh, Jesus' parables that, that buried his talent. Do you remember that story in Matthew 25? He buried his talent, didn't do a thing with it, and Jesus, uh, Jesus said this. He, he said, that man ended up in outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth which is the same way Jesus ends these five parables at the very end of, of Matthew 13. That's what happens uh, to those who, who don't find the kingdom of heaven. 
is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it really doesn't matter if we're rich or if we're poor. The reward for the kingdom uh, is the same. And it's available to, to everyone. Just prior to our, our parable is that uh, parable of the, uh, the farmer. I told it to the little kids this morning about the poor man. Wasn't, that wasn't his field that he was plowing. He was a tenant farmer or a sharecropper. Uh, but he finds the treasure and he sold everything that he had and went and bought that field so he could have uh, the treasure. The merchant in our par parable, he's wealthy. He's, he's, he's a merchant. He has merchandise. He has, he has pearls. He has a business. Uh, he was just going about his daily task when he, he came upon the, the pearl of great price and then he sold everything to obtain uh, that pearl. Now, you know, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like that. Uh, we receive the kingdom and we uh, live in the kingdom only as we make it the priority uh, of our lives. The farmer and the merchants, both, they sold everything. They gave up everything. They risked everything uh, to obtain the treasure. In Luke 12, 34, Jesus says, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So notice, notice in this parable, uh, the merchant is no longer a merchant because he sold everything. He gave, it, he gave everything up for the pearl of great price. He no longer has a business of buying and selling. He has a new life now. And you know, I don't, I don't think Jesus means that we all need to sell our business and go into the ministry like I did. Uh, I think Jesus is saying in this parable that, that once we obtain the pearl of great price, which is the kingdom of heaven, then, or, or living in hog heaven, if you will, our old life is gone. Uh, we don't desire it anymore. Uh, we're not who we used to be. We've experienced the kingdom of heaven. We, we, we no longer want that kind of life. Our old self died uh, with Christ, and our new self has risen with Christ, as Paul would say. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's what happens uh, when we experience the kingdom of heaven. We, we are a new creation uh, in Christ Jesus. This is the way God works. He, he, God's, it's God's nature that, that, uh, uh, that the kingdom of heaven, he, he gives us a glimpse of it. He shows us something shiny, something that we want to rub, something that, that we think will bring us good luck, I suppose. Uh, he shows us how this, uh, how this treasure, this pearl of great price is, uh, is desirable and, and we want it. Uh, and then when we, we obtain it, it, it fills our every longing, if you will. Uh, it, it's the sole meaning of our life. It, it brings redemption to our soul. You know, pearls are born out of irritation. You know, we, we were always taught that, that maybe they, uh, a little piece of sand got in there, you know, and it, and it caused this pearl. But really, it's, it was a parasite. A parasite works its way into the shell, uh, and, it, and as a defense mechanism, the, the, the clam or the oyster, it'll, it'll secrete this liquid over it. And it'll do this over and over and over again uh, and keep building up and building up. Sometimes... Uh, they can do this for 20 years or so. And, and, and thinking about that, I just thought about all the years of irritation that that clam uh, went through uh, in my opening story that was able to produce a pearl that was 2.2 feet long, a foot wide, and weighs 75 pounds. That's a lot of irritation that that clam had to go through. And you know, you may feel like that sometimes. You may feel like that you've gone through struggle after struggle after struggle wondering uh, if you'll even make it through it uh, or, or what good's going to come out of it. Uh, but you know, unlike the, the giant clam, we're able to detach from our old world and reattach to, to our new world in Jesus Christ. We're able to let go of that, that stuff that causes us to struggle and attach ourselves uh, to a new life uh, in, in Jesus Christ. Again, our scripture begins. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. On finding one of great value, he went and he sold all that he had. 
and bought it. And bought it. Have you? Have you found it? Have you bought it? Bought it with your commitment. Confession of faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word this morning. We thank You for all that has taken place here in this wonderful sanctuary. All the praise and the worship and the baptisms and the reaffirmations of faith. And Lord, uh, it's been a great day. We pray, Lord, that You would help us uh, be searchers of the great pearl in Jesus Christ. And when we find it, don't let us hide it under the bed. Let us share it with our neighbor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.